Hello, gorgeous. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Give Them Lala podcast. Before we deep dive into it all, I need to remind you to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and make sure you comment on this video because I love to bump gums. Thank you. Hello, gorgeous. Oh my God. Freaking God, I cannot believe it. We are back for season 11. We're recapping shit. I feel like I'm going to shit my pants. <laughs> we have Alex Baskin as my guest today, Woo! our guest. Welcome to the casting couch, the legitimate one. Thank you for having me. <laughs> the legitimate <laughs> casting couch. <laughs> are you nervous? A little bit, I I'm have to say. I'm a, I'm a little starstruck because usually I talk to you and we just like shoot the shit. But now you're sitting here and I'm like, okay, this is the creator of all all things that make me survive during like the rough moments. Like you are the person that created OC, BH, Vanderpump. I mean, do you ever think like, holy shit, everything I touch turns to gold? No, not at all. Because I just always think that every day gold is going to turn into shit. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep them going. And sometimes I just wonder how I'm still here. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm very curious about how you got into producing. Well, producing reality television, was that always the goal? Like, goal or were you like wanting to be in movies and scripted? I used to joke that uh, no one's goal was to end up in reality. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> yeah, so, totally. Um, and it's changed, obviously. I think that, you know, in the pecking order of things, reality is much higher. And I think things are blurred and blended now. But um, I got into it as accidentally as anyone. Mm. I grew up in L.A., my dad was a writer, and I got an internship at MTV the summer after my senior year in high school. And that's when MTV was doing a lot of cool shit. And I just loved it. I loved all of the action. I love the fact that you could go from idea to air quickly. Okay. Um, and I loved it so much that I went off to law school. So I decided then <laughs> that huh. maybe I wanted to be an attorney. And loved law school knew I did not want to practice law. Um, I looked around at the successful partners and firms that I've worked for over the summers, and I thought, I don't want one thing that you have. Like, mm. I'm very bored by this. So I called up Doug Ross from Evolution, who I had met when I was at MTV, and I was like, do you remember me all these years ago? And you thought that I was a bright young kid and it wanted to hire me. Do you have a place for me? And he hired me. And so that was my only job um, for many years until I started my own company. And wow. we just kind of caught the wave. And, you know, when reality became as big as it did and it made all of those cable networks in particular. And so I was an ambitious young person at a time that an industry was booming. That's amazing. Really amazing. What did you work on specific? Were you like on working on the real world MTV? No, you know, I was uh, working in development. And, oh, okay. um, but I had the balls more than than I do now to pitch them. Um, when I was interning there. So I set up a meeting and I, I set up a pilot there for a project that I wanted to do with them. And I got like you know, dressed up <laughs> and started this formal meeting. And so that's how I ended up meeting a few producers because uh. needed someone to actually make that. Um, but I just, I love the fact that you could make anything possible. And the fun thing at the time too was just, you know, pop culture trends were set by MTV. Mm -hmm. And yeah. That's the thing that was so fun about the current wave that we're riding on Vanderpump Rules is it's one of the few recent examples of everyone coming together and watching a show at the same time. It's just a conversation across the board, you know. You said that Scandaval, yeah. what it was coined, was the craziest thing that had happened to our show, but it's also kind of the worst thing that happened to our show. So when Scandaval happened and we decided to go into season 11, what were your fears? Well, I thought, contrary to what certain people in certain quarters have said about that incident, um, or not that incident, that, that controversy saving the show, the truth is we were making a great show in season 10. And in fact, we had made a great season. And it was a bounce back season and the audience was into it. And I felt like it. there's a danger in burning too fast and too brightly and I also thought that is the one thing that has happened to this group that has threatened to tear it completely apart. Mm. Everything else has been something we've been able to overcome. And I didn't know that we could put the pieces back together. And so I, I thought, look, I would trade 
putting aside all of the human damage and everything else, just purely analytically as a producer, I wish it never happened. Wow. Isn't that I can wild? See that, though. Really? Do you, and you think that will never change that opinion? It could. And I mean, you know, other things that have come out of it, like, for example, The Valley, mm -hmm. you know, the new series, which you know, may or may not have happened if there weren't such momentum. So I think there's that. And I think, you know, things change in unexpected ways. Um, but that is the way that for a while that I felt, and you know, that's still my analysis right now. Well, yeah, because if you think about it now, now I have like the big wig backing up what I have said, mm -hmm. right? That no matter whether, whether Scandal happened or not, season 10 was going to be great. And all of these people saying it was set up to make season 10 or make the show pop off. We've been popping not at this level, but we have our main producer saying, I wish it wouldn't have happened because for the first time ever, you have a group of people where it's like, where, how do we rebuild? How do we even move on from this? And I said, this is a group for season 11. This is a group of people. And I said, it's for the first time, we're all very selfish. Now I know that we're a selfish group from what it looks like for the first time ever. No one gives a damn about anybody except themselves. Everyone is living up their own ass season 11. Mm. It's it's going to be a wild season to watch. Do you think it's good? Like, I haven't seen it, obviously. I've seen the first episode. You've seen quite a few cuts. Do you think it's good? I do. I think it's really good. And I wasn't sure that it would be. So I had great trepidation going into the season because I thought we had less control than we've ever had. And there's just, you know, the show that you might want to make. And then there's the one that you do make that you have to make, which is just, you know, sort of where everyone is. And so we can't bring the group back together if that's not where they are. Right. And we have there's a, you know questions all the time like, you know, well, uh, what about Ariana shooting with Tom? Whatever. It's like, I, what are we supposed to do? Right. I mean, you know, we sort of take people for where they are. Mm -hmm. um, and but. I think it's fascinating. I think that it's still really interesting to see the dynamics. Interesting, even with Ariana and Tom, the fact that they live together through the season is wild. So it's I think wild. people are going to enjoy seeing that documented. And no, it really, it's the, I had a question. Guys, if, was that a storyline for them also? That's what I thought. Looking down, did they live together for a storyline? Oh, you mean you mean you mean like years ago? No, or just or like no, like right season. now. Like, oh, are they staying like in right the same now. house? Oh. And they're like, it'll be a We're great like, storyline. You couldn't get them to agree on anything. <laughs> but if I was in that <laughs> no, position, seriously. I'm just getting the hell out. Yeah, I don't care. No, but that's what the season. That's we'll see. Oh, right, you're gonna see well, it all we'll play see. out because there's a lot of things that are said that you're like, I can't get down with what you're saying because of the way that you're moving, and I don't understand this. By the way. Easton does not watch reality TV. <laughs> I have to start. I just told him about the episode where I told Stassi and Kristen to wrap it up, looking like a drunk Shih Tzu. Ep that was season <laughs> four. And now I have something to go home and watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, it's just like, the he thing no is, it's so different for me. Like, I've never watched it. Even when, like, your first season, when I was like, oh, maybe I'll watch it. I watched one, and it's so weird seeing, like, your sister... <laughs> Just do all this shit. And then I see her like making out with James and I'm like, I can't fucking do it, man. It, it is my wild. language, but it's just so different from like a brother's standpoint. I, I, yes. I can't get by, but I'm going to, I'm going to try my hardest, but I like, I can do the Valley. It's just like when you're on it, it's like, oh, uh, the Valley I can't wait for. And you uh. did say if there wasn't so much momentum, like you never know if, if the Valley would have happened or not. Like we really will never know. I'm so excited about it. Can you give us any sort of teaser Teasers. about the Valley? Oh. Teaser and what is the main <laughs> difference between producing the Valley and producing Vanderpump? Good question. Okay, so here's my tease. We start the Valley with a crossover between Jax and Tom Sandoval. And so you have Jax joining Boys Night, which is with Schwartz and James and Sandoval. And... Uh, Jax has a few choice words for Sandoval. Okay. And, um, and it's really fun. And then we see Jax drive over the hill and go into the valley. I have chills. And so do I. So do I. Oh, my God. It is, it's cinematic in our world. Yes, 100%. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, this is like when... It's the start of a new production. No, but it's like remembering being in Utah and watching Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. 
And all of a sudden, I'm watching a new show called Vanderpump Rules. Remember, you you did a similar oh, crossover. Oh yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. I mean, in that one, I, it's funny. I almost hate to invoke that one because we can't possibly compare to that because the stakes mm. the were stakes. so high, and so we had like a hundred percent audience retention. We'd love to say that was my idea. It was not. It was someone else's, and then I you know helped put it into motion. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, this still will give you the feeling of being in one and then being in the next one. And I think where the Valley is very different is it's a different phase in life. And the idea is adulting. And it's also that this is a group that is trying to raise families or figure out what's next, but they don't have anything figured out. And so that's the fun of it to me is – that uh, Jax is still Jax. So, Jax will never not be anything. It's like kids raising Jax. kids still. Yeah, that, that's what it is. And and so, you know, Jax preaches and proclaims that he has grown up and everyone needs to find the maturity that he has. And we see by the end of the first episode that that's dubious. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited to watch this. I'm hearing murmurs. Do you think it's accurate when people say, it's, it's a show that falls somewhere in between Vanderpump Rules and Housewives? That's how I pitched it. Oh, That's okay. Exactly so you would it. say yeah. that that okay. is true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you show a lot of like the kids and them being parents? We show a we show a good amount. We show enough so that you can see that they are all caring parents and they're right. kind of trying to figure it out. Um, but at the same time, there's only so much that you can watch of children, right? And I mean, I even think for you, like, doesn't it stress you out to watch people with their children? Uh, well, I. D- I don't mean to be rude. I just don't care about other people's right. children. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. Like, I know that I care a lot about my child, but like, I really don't give a shit about yours. Other people's <laughs> pets and kids are not interesting. That's how everyone is, though. It's like, no one's ever going to think your kid or pet is as cute as you do. My question between the Housewives franchise, Vanderpump, and now The Valley, this might be hard, but what was the most difficult one to produce and why? They've all been difficult in different ways. I would say where Vanderpump has been easier in some ways is you had a group that was fully in. And so everyone has had their moments. It's like, you know, in your first few seasons on the show, like, like, oh, bad day. She's fleeing to Utah. (laughs) 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 And literally not picking up a call from anyone. There's nothing we can do. And the network would be like, what do you mean she's in Utah? <laughs> she's in Utah. Like, That's what I mean. Like, <laughs> physically in Utah. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, or like Stasi's New York adventure. <laughs> like those things. Like, right. You know, so, there was some of that, but you still had a group that was constantly generating story and was as game as anyone as I, that I've ever met to tell it. Mm. So, there's that. Housewives, it always felt like the stakes were higher whether or not they were. It just was a group that is, like, you know, kind of very serious about those things. Right. Um, and then I'm trying to think about else. The Valley actually was a fairly seamless production. And, oh. and I think, you know, I didn't know kind of what everyone's frame of mind would be for it. But, um, but they were all pretty into it in game. And I think it also helped having Jax and Brittany and Kristen. So we had, like, three ringers in there. Right, and right. then Janet is someone who's, you know, she's never really been at the forefront of Vanderpump Rules, but she seems to know the drill. Yeah. She's been friends with all of us for quite some time, so it's like she understands how this works. Totally. Um, I just think it would be the person that I feel like the most for, because I can't even imagine filming a show like this, and just, i just given birth to not one, but two babies. Oh, my God. Nia. Yeah. Okay. Two... F- Two babies. She's got three kids under two. Oh. That she and just f- gave birth? To I mean, she just. gave. Just. Yes. Like, yeah. they literally, they were so brand new. She's like, one of the things I filmed, we were at Jackson Brits, but she's in a room, like, both babies on the tit. And I'm like, yeah. that, you, you're a superhero. <laughs> like, Right. Yes. Right. I don't know how she did it. I think the Valley is going to be absolutely spectacular. And I told Brittany, you must have a watch party every single week. And I can't wait to get on social media and talk about how I feel about Jax Taylor in each episode. Oh, I've been is that going to be that. a segment now? It'll probably be a segment <laughs> and, <laughs> on and the podcast. By the way, what a ride that's going to be because he is just in the first episode. Like your observations are going to be all over the place about him because it's really fun. Well, Alex, I can't wait because before we started, there was a time when Jax and Kristen Doty were no longer a part of Vanderpump. And I would see people talk about how 
evolved they are now and how much they've changed. And I just can't wait for people to see where they are now <laughs> and see people's take. We give them the full <laughs> opportunity to show how evolved they are. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it's almost Valentine's Day. And if you're looking for something special for your Valentine or even yourself, Quince has you covered. Quince has luxury essentials at affordable prices that you'll absolutely love. I have one of their 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters, and it is one of the softest, most comfortable things that I have ever owned. I've also got the waffle bath towels in white. They are so soft. I ended up getting them for my mom and Ocean, and I even bought some for my house in Palm Springs. But Quince has so much more. They've got washable silk tops and dresses, organic cotton sweaters, and 14 karat gold jewelry. All of Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands, and Quince only works with factories that use ethical and responsible manufacturing practices. I love that. And since Quince partners directly with those factories, they're able to cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings on to us. So give yourself and others the gift of luxury this Valentine's Day with Quince. Go to quince.com slash lala for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's q-u-i-n-c-e dot com slash lala to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash lala. I had a question about production and when you're going into it and like selecting a cast. How do you go about that? Oh, yeah. Like, do you... Because... Obviously, Monica said that she from applied Salt Lake. from Salt Lake. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you saw on People the reunion. People applied. Yeah. She was she like, I applied, applied for this gig. So I was thinking like, I was like, I haven't even thought about that side of producing. Do you have people in mind that you've seen or is yeah, it how like does that people work, are Alex? kind of putting in a resume? Well, I love that, you know, she acts like it's a job at Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not, um, like putting together the Valley um, started with conversations I was having with Jax. And so he and I went out to dinner and we were just talking about what's going on in his life now and who his friends are. And I quickly settled on the idea of doing something about families or couples, right? And then we kind of built it out from there. And so um, we put on tape pretty much everyone that's in his close inner circle um, and kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. So everyone really knows each other. They're all invested in each other. They all care. And we didn't want to, you know, add any gimmicks or try to fill out the cast in a way that wasn't authentic. I think other shows are a little different. So I think if there's a show that is more of a construct and it's not necessarily about a group, then, you know, maybe it's put together differently. But look, it's like when you join Vanderpump, you know, you and James have been in Ariana are the examples of additions to the group because – you guys were a part of the group and made yourself matter to the group. And any time that we ever just brought in someone random who had just worked at Sur a little bit, it didn't work. It never worked. Mm. It just, it felt like you've been here for five minutes where when I joined, it was like I'd been getting wasted at Sur since I was 18, you know? What so, <laughs> right. It was like bit. What was your initial impressions of Lala? Did you have a thought of like this girl's not? I'm sure nightmare last, or the way he's looking I would right run now. Away. He's like, uh, we I, did I thought, know well, what. there was my impressions <laughs> from casting and then production. So from, from casting, I thought she was a gem. Right. I thought you were great because I was like, who the fuck is this? So I thought you were one of a kind. You were living in Stassi's bedroom. Like that was weird. That was very you know? weird. So the whole thing was great. Like we were all in on that, and I could not quite figure you out. And then in production, it was a different story because we had never met anyone, like I said, who just was like, nope, not doing it. <laughs> so, it was like, so there was that. But you were worth it. You were a pain in the ass, but you were worth it. Thank Ooh. you, Alex. Is she still a pain in the ass? That. I was going to say, what's Less so. Yeah. <laughs> less, less so. I actually can I mean, really not anymore because I think, I mean, you've just changed and matured mm. so much and you just view it differently and you're grounded and – different things matter to you and you're right. much more secure. So you're really not a pain in the ass at this point. At this point, like it feels like therapy. Like before, when I see anybody, cause I love reality TV. When I see anyone freaking out about something that may come out, I'm like, girl, just let it come out. And mm -hmm. then next year, yeah. no one's going to care. And it's going to be a completely different storyline. Yeah. It is interesting. You get to see all these personalities on these different shows. Do you ever sort of look at these people and think 
this person would be great doing a project with this person. Maybe I should do, do you ever? All of the time. Okay. I mean, I think it's really fun to sort of mash things up. And I mean, we've talked about, you know, certain potential partnerships. Yes. Right. That uh, Because I just, it, you get to know different people and sort of see how there might be some synergistic, you know, combination between them. And so I think that all the time, or sometimes I'm jealous. Sometimes I think I'll look at a show and think, well, we really could use her over here. It's too bad. I can't make, you know, like a trade. A trade. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Do you ever look at projects and you're like, damn, what I would have given to be the person that came up with that. Yeah, it's the best feeling when you're the person who makes the announcement that everyone else thinks is really obvious. I'm like, I got there first, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, like with Botch, for example, is is I just, that came about because um, I was at dinner with Paul Nassif. This is when he and Adrian Maloof um, were divorcing and he wanted me back on television again. I'm just like, what do you do all day as a plastic surgeon? And he started describing revision plastic surgery. I was like, okay. What about a show where we're fixing that? So I called it Nip Fucked, and <laughs> I added him and Terry Debro together because I thought they would be good so together. So they, did they not know each other before you came into the mix? They hadn't seen each other for years. They had met, or they, they knew each other from years ago, but hadn't talked but in a while. But they weren't homies. No, not at all. Because no. their chemistry on camera, you would think that they go and get drinks, and they're so different, mm -hmm. but it just works so well. It worked from the minute that we shot this, like, bootleg tape. <laughs> <laughs> where basically I put celebrities on card for celebrities that had bad surgeries and they talked about how they would undo that work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just worked. So that was one that I, you know, I couldn't have ever imagined that they would be that good together, but I just, I thought you needed two and those guys. You had to have two. Yeah. 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 No, what? that one is awesome. And I love that one is neck down and the other one's neck up. Although they fight over that. So the really funny thing is... Terry in, I want to say it was like starting in season three. Because by the way, everyone's happy. You get two seasons of a hit show. Everyone's a real good sport, whatever. Yeah. And then starting in season three, he's like, hey, why are you giving Paul all the faces? I do faces too. I'm like, I know, but you also do the body and Paul doesn't. So <laughs> Right. So you're going to have to just like take one for the team and only focus on the tits and tummy. Yes. Right. You know? <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> like, and why are you complaining about it, yeah. Terry? <laughs> Terry's the best, so I good-naturedly give him shit. And then Paul's complaint during at that point on the show, too, was Paul all of a sudden wanted— it was like a car service complaint. He wanted, like, a car service to go, like, 200 feet. And so I ran into him. It was literally—we were shooting the after show, and he wanted car service, and he's like— he lived, like, you know, like, two miles from there or something. Yeah. So I ran into him at a party, and I said, Hey, Paul, how'd you get here tonight? And this is in front of, like, a group of people. And uh, he's like, I drove. I go, so you do drive? <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, oh yeah, no! So oh no! <laughs> now that yeah. is a devo. <laughs> Good. Wait. For so him. You did did he get car service though? No. He, he like he let he was like you hurt my feelings, but you made your point. So <laughs> okay. like, I'm like, all right. Well, that's a win. I'm you kidding. have a way of doing that. <laughs> Hurting feelings. Yeah. <laughs> no, of, of, of like making good points. Yeah. I know most of you are just as crazy busy as I am, and that includes weekends too. Between parenting my daughter through her terrible twos, knocking stuff off of my to-do list, and spending time with my family and friends, my weekends are jam-packed, and I'm exhausted on Sunday nights. That's why I've adopted Hydration Mondays with Liquid IV. Hydration is one of the best things you can do for your overall health, and Liquid IV helps me feel revived and ready to take on the week. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink. It's got eight vitamins and nutrients, and it's sugar-free. And I almost forgot to mention the most important thing. Well, at least for me. It tastes amazing. I actually like to drink it. And they've got so many flavors, white peach, green grape, lemon lime, and one of my favorites, which is the strawberry lemonade. Liquid IV comes in pre-measured stick packs. You pour one pack into 16 ounces of water and you drink. It really is just that easy. Weekends are for going buck wild. Have a game plan on Monday with Liquid IV. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code LALA at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Superior Hydration today using promo code LALA at liquidiv.com. Does it ever get hard when you start developing like real connections with people on these shows that you are creating and producing? You, they call you to vent. Yeah. 
you take an interest in their life, you become a confidant, but you know that you still have to tell their story. Does it ever get sticky where you're like, God, I really wish that I was not as close to this person? Yeah, it uh, it can be really hard because they're people that I care about. And so I know that telling the story is going to impact their lives. But at the same time, that's the job. And, you know, they sort of know that that's the show that they're on. Um, but it does feel tough. I think that because of the depth of the relationships, they understand that it isn't personal. And I also don't do anything that is gratuitous. So there's always the story that we could tell, right? And it's like, you could make anything, you know, a thousand times worse. And yeah. there's things that, for the sake of discretion, that you don't include. Um, but the, you know, the deal is, you know, look, if you sign up for it, then, you know, those things are open and are discussed. And, you know, I can't make that go away. But it does. I mean, there are times when I've thought, uh, you know, maybe I need to take a break from doing it because it's um, because it's hard. And, right. um, you know, and again, I you're all too well aware that these are real people um, and they really have to live with it. I also, on the other hand, have enough perspective to know everything passes. Yeah. And so the things that in the moment feel like, you know, the end of your life are not. And, um, you know, time goes on. So I'm aware of that, too. But uh, but it's really hard. It weighs on me. It does. Yeah. I was wondering that because I know that you and Kyle Richards are very close. And, you know, I just, I can't imagine having something like a 27-year marriage that's been put under a microscope. Children are involved. Like, you had such a picture-perfect life. And then this unfolds on television. And I think that was the first time that I was like, damn, I wonder if that ever kind of fucks with Alex. Yeah, that one was really hard to see um, because they're both great people and they have had a great marriage. Yeah. And so it's not the, you know, proverbial housewife, oh, okay, I saw that coming and maybe everybody is better off for it. Right. Um, so that was really, really tough to to experience. And, you know, you want to, on the one hand, be there for her as a human being, but also you have to tell the story too. I find when I get, because you do become extremely close with producers. Like, I find that they become, like, my friends, but also kind of like family members because you talk to them. You you know that you're telling a story. And in order for you to tell the story properly, you need to know exactly where my head's at. So I find it, there's some people that are new and they're like, don't tell producers anything. And it's like, well, then you're, you, if you don't want any control over your narrative, do that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, pick up the phone because there are many times where I could be saying something and a producer says to me, this is how I took it. And I'm like, hold up. No, we got to rewind. This is where my head's at. And they go, great. Let's let's tell that That story because it's the true story. You're so right. And it's counterintuitive. So you tend to think that if you withhold and control information that you control the story and it isn't true. And look, the case study for that is Ariana and Scandival. Yeah. So she... She found Sandoval's phone or she, she whatever. She, uh, you know, saw what she did on Sc- on Sandoval's phone. And then I almost called him Scandoval. <laughs> and, and then I'm like, who's who these days? And then, and, then, um, and then she let production know right away. And she told that story. And I would say pretty powerfully so. She said, I called production immediately because I knew that he would try to get me to not talk about it not tell them we were going to concoct something. And because it was years of us in a relationship together, he probably could have gotten me to change my mind. And I got chills when I heard that. I was like, damn, it's just wild that the, that's what I mean. Like the production team becomes your family. The first person you call, by the way, there's a lot of things that have happened in my life where the first person I call, obviously my mama, but then I'm calling a producer. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. Was there any world in which you were not picking cameras back up for that? No. Or was it you tell we us? had No. I mean, we were going yeah. to do that, but we, and it just was not even a question. We had, there were uh, a couple of contributors to the decision who thought we should just hold until the reunion. Mm. And we thought that was asinine. We're like, no, we're going in right now. I That's still get chills thinking about it. Yeah. I do too. Having Jeremiah be like, you're not allowed to leave LA because we're picking up cameras like tomorrow. Right. Damn. 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 What do you think about everyone saying, like, I think it's so, so again, I watch a lot of reality TV. Kyle stepping into her interview with like the red cutout top on. We've got Southern Charm people who uh, 
I think her name's Olivia. It is Olivia. Shows up in like her kind of revenge dress. And now no one, not a soul on Bravo can go through something like being done dirty by a man. No one can have that happen and then wear red with cutouts or they're immediately labeled Ariana. Yeah. Is that the craziest <laughs> shit to watch, Alex? So funny. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, Mauricio and Kyle planned this to have a scandal moment. I'm like, yes. The, the couple that's been together for 27 years. Wanted a scandal what moment. A scandal moment. Yeah, that's what they were thinking so that, what, she could continue on the show? I mean, I, I know. think she's, you know. But Kyle's been the glue from the very beginning. Erica Jane said it, I think it was either two reunions ago, a year ago. Yeah. Where she's like, she is the queen of the group. She's the glue to all of us. And I feel like that's very true. Well, you know, obviously she's been around since the beginning. The show is... You know, important news, she's been great for the show, and she does hold it all together. She just is, in some ways, the ultimate real housewife. Mm-hmm. You know, she just yeah. she just gets it. And she does it in a way, too, that doesn't compromise herself. So she knows what she's doing, wants to make a show, but stands behind what she's done as well. Right. Um, and, and I think it's great. I think, you know, it's, she's challenging the perception of her right now because she just is in a different place than she was. And so I think that's throwing people off a lot. Um, but she's just, you know, the bedrock of that show. By the way, I don't think she's ever looked better. I find her attitude to be very sexy and inspiring. I, I dig her. Oh, she doesn't give a shit anymore, too. I mean, that's kind of the, Not at the all. fun of it. Yeah. Because, you know, there were many times yeah. where, like, she didn't want, she didn't like confrontation. Yeah. She kind of, like, clammed up a bit. Now she's like, you're a fucking bitch right now. Yeah. Stop. And it's like, oh, I'm a little wet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, she's activated. She's she activated. Is, she is. Uh, so we have that uh, reunion on Friday. The reunion is on oh. Friday? Why? You're obviously boots on the ground with that. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait. Oh, it's going to be good. It's so good. With you're the- still on OC, right? Yeah. Can I ask you? What, when you think about all of the the seasons that you have under your belt of all the shows, is there one season of any of the shows that sticks out in your mind going, that was a freaking hard season? Like, I'm so glad that shit is done. To me, it's either the strongest or the weakest seasons. Okay. So the weakest seasons um, sometimes, which is because it just doesn't work. Right. I mean, and there are there are good seasons and bad seasons. So am like, I overstepping by asking, is there a season where you're like, that was a really shitty season of well, that show? I thought, um, you know, look, I thought Vanderpump season nine mm. was dog shit. Beyond. <laughs> I was like, so, we're not coming back for, for season yeah. 10, y'all. I thought, I thought, we're done. And that's why I've said a bunch that to me, you know, we caught this big scandal and we went right in and, you know, everyone um, sort of did what they did with it. But to me, the accomplishment was being around for that to happen, was still being around for a season 10. And you kind of ride it out and, you know, there's ebbs and flows. So I think with Orange County, um, I thought last season was really good. The season before was not. Was that the one with Noella? Yeah, season 16. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't great. Last season was great. Really but strong. But the one with Noella... Without, I don't think Vicky or Tamara made an appearance at all. That was a tough one to watch. It, it I just, still watched it, but it just didn't come together. It didn't. It didn't happen. And so there's that. You know, Beverly Hills has had some seasons too. Um, you do the best that you can with any of it, but yeah, you know, I think that it's really hard when it doesn't all come together. And then sometimes it's really hard when you're going through something that's just you know tough to manage and tough to trudge through. Right. Are there seasons that you on any of the shows that you produce that you're like that season you can watch? one through 15 or is there a season of a show that you're like that was incredible like or like should i just through say, and I can through even every say, episode was incredible yeah, like top to bottom yeah it was unreal perfect or if you could only watch one season of a show you produced what season would that oh be i love what that show? that's a good question i would say it tends to be earlier seasons for me because i just have the removal and the distance from them to just you know, Enjoy it. Yeah, and probably rewrite them in my mind and everything is perfect. And I'm like, oh, this is when I was coming of age. And I started to, yeah, yeah whatever. Totally. <laughs> so it's just what we do. You know, like you look through photos of yourself smiling and, you know, you're not aware of like the hour before, you know, where you yes. were grounded by your parents or whatever. So right. I just, um, that's what I think. I think the early seasons of Beverly Hills, 
Um, I think there's a few great seasons of Vanderpump, but I still season one was fun just because I knew we were on to something, you know, and it right. started with the crossover and whatever. So um, there's that. And then um, Orange County. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I liked the last season of Orange County because it was a renaissance. And so that was fun to me. And I thought we were back from the dead. And that's right. always a really good feeling. I'm like, okay, we're, we've still got it. That's how it felt. Yeah. That As was... someone who's watched since the beginning. But there is something, like you said, about OG seasons before anybody got injected and realized what they were going <laughs> to look like on camera, where you were just like, show. it felt like you were walking around with a tape recorder on these people. There is, so the head of current programming from Prof was Sherry Levine. She was the head for many years. Um, used to, she's, she's great. She's brilliant woman, but is just um, savage and cutting in what she says. And so I remember after the first season of Beverly Hills, she's like, congratulations, it'll never be that good again. <gasps> like, Do you feel that way? It's never been that good again? I don't think that's true because I think it's just different. And I thought the yeah. season, I thought season two was great for that yeah. show too. But um, oh my god, yes! But I know what so she, good. I know what she means, and and it was it's your point too, where something changes when people watch themselves and when other people comment on them, and you cannot deny that social media has an impact on people, and there's a self awareness that you know maybe doesn't exist for season one, and maybe we can't even get to that these days anyway because everyone knows how the shows are made or think they do anyway or thinks that they've cracked the code so there's they're self-conscious anyway but by the way i i found that refreshing with the valley i actually didn't think that there was a ton of image crafting i thought that people showed up as who they were and things happened so well speaking know. of social media do you let's be honest here do you guys take what the fans say into account when filming these shows when I think we apply the appropriate discount factor. So okay. I'm not going to say that we're not aware of it, but I will say that social media is a measure of intensity yeah. more than anything. But um, it isn't. It doesn't line up with any research that you would do, any any rigorous research, because you know it tends to be the same people on social media who are heated time and again, and it does not reflect it. It's a really small and very biased sample size. So how do you decide if a, if there's a new cast member that comes into the mix? How do you decide if that person is coming back or if they're not? Because someone could think they did great, but overall, like, how do you measure if they did great? It's hard, and it is not a science. And I always think that um, it's a mistake to try to turn something that is creative and that is, you know, sort of floating and amorphous into something that it isn't. And so it's a series of conversations. So it'll be the producers and the network, and you arrive at some kind of consensus. And, you know, not everyone may be pleased with it, but um, it's an analysis based on what you think of that specific person, what their fit is within the group, where you think you can go with them. It's all of those things. It's much more qualitative than quantitative. Do you find that a lot of these new housewives that are being cast come in and they see what they could be making on the show? Like, do you find that sometimes you hit a dead end where it's like, this person would have been great, but they're yeah. coming in here asking for the sun, stars, and the moon, and they got to go? Well, I mean, we lead or I lead a lot of conversations by telling people like, you know, congratulations, I have good news, we want you on the show. Now we're about to insult you. And <laughs> yeah. just so you know, you should be, this is what it is. And, and you know, this is the economics of this business. And right. you have to accept that. And also it sounds you know, trite, but it's the truth. You're not signing up for the show just to make money from the show. It's, it's really, what does this do for you on the whole? What is your plan, you know, to use this? Um, so we have all of those conversations, but I do think that people sometimes are not realistic about it. And I've seen people talk themselves out of, you know, opportunities that would have been great and then circle back to us, you know, a year later and say, now I'm ready. Like, well, now we're not. It's like, well, now we've moved on from you. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, we don't care. You spent one season. What about shows? Let's talk about shows you do not produce. Yeah. Do you see any, maybe some of the Housewives franchise, maybe Summer House that you're like, I would have killed it, or I would have done this differently. It's the cheapest thing to do. Yes, I do. Okay. So it is <laughs> because you're not, you know, I'm aware that people are doing the same thing to the shows that I'm on. 
Um, but that's kind of, it's hard not to do that. And it's hard as a producer not to watch, especially if it's this genre and, and just, you know, think that you can extrapolate what the circumstances are and that you might've handled it differently. But at the same time, there are plenty of shows that I watch and I marvel at what other producers have done with it and think, you know, thank God I'm just watching this and I didn't have to make it. Yeah. Right. right? Do you have a specific do you have a specific show, whether or not it's like Real Housewives of Miami or like that you're like, I could have killed it. I could have done something. Well, I, fewer in. In the Bravo universe? Yeah, because okay. because you kind of think in any of those shows you think, you know, you could do, but other people could do the shows that I do as well. Right. You know? Kind and, of the same formula. Exactly. And they're, and they're just, you know, they're different. There's different dynamics. The relationships matter, but there's you know, people that do that. Yeah. Um, to me, it's things that I just, um, that I've never done before. Or, okay. Oh, or, because, okay. or like, for example, have you guys watched um, Bitcoin no. on Netflix? No. no. So it's great. It's just a, it's a cryptocurrency scam show, mm-hmm. but it just is really stylishly done. And I just oh, thought every yes, choice was right. I've heard of this. Yeah. We got to watch that. Because you have to remember, <clears throat> shows on Bravo, no matter what production company is being used, you have to send the cut over to Bravo and they make their notes. So in a sense, when you watch, they're, they're all, you. the vibe is the same throughout, no matter what, which is why people get so addicted. That's why we have things like BravoCon, because you just become a fan of it all. Right. Yeah. You're watching the same game, inserting different players that are all fucking savage and awesome, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. It gives me chills talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> okay. Do you think we would ever, we, as if I have a say, <laughs> do you think you guys would ever, if Rachel Raquel picked up the phone and said, I really think I messed up and I'd like to be back on the show if you'll have me, with everything that you know going behind the scenes? I don't know. I mean... I hesitate to say never, but I just, it's such a far-fetched scenario that I would say right now we're good where we are, and I right. hope she's good where she is. Yeah, so Alex, we do an ache and relief at the end of every episode. Um, Jess, you'll start us off so Alex knows what this means. Okay, so this is the day after the Vanderpump Rules season 11 premiere, so yeah. I can say this. My relief is your vulnerability in this premiere episode. I was so proud of you. I don't know what the viewers have said at this point, but I'm excited to see. I know you're nervous, but I think it's a side of you that um, is very refreshing, to be honest. That's my relief. My ache is that we still have now another week, pretty much, for for episode two, because it was such a good season 11 premiere episode. Love it. Easton? Easton, I'm what's your up. ache and relief um, of the week? My ache is going to be the Miami Seaquarium again. Mm. Oh, love yes. it. Tell us. So out them. That. Out them. I know there was another video that came out January of this this year, 2024. Okay. And there's more dolphins in it. There's three in one that I see. It's a video if you would like to watch. But you know what? I bet the walrus whisper is all over he that is, shit. He mm. is. Shout out Good to him. Good for him. But um, yeah, they've had 120 dolphins die in this uh, seaquarium, so let's just keep it up and uh, keep outing them. Disgusting. I, so, Despicable. And What's then, your relief? Uh, my relief is going to be outing them, so I'm pretty <laughs> bad at the air. So let's Having get a platform that going. to out them. Yes, so that's, um, what, that's my relief. So let's go get them. Easton, I love that for you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I guess I can wait until... VPR episode eight for the valley to come out. That's my ache. My relief is knowing that it's coming out (laughs) because I got in trouble for talking about it on my Amazon Live. Alex might not know this. Yeah, I don't. (laughs) Yeah, Bravo hit me up. Not me personally. They hit a member of my team up and they said, "Please tell her to shut the fuck up and stop talking about the valley." I'm just so excited about it. Do you it. like people talking about it? Well, not when it's not announced yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah, that was like a couple of days before the announcement, huh? Like a couple of months, but it's okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, you shit the bed. I was off. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I don't mind people talking about anything, and I think that also was a badly kept secret. 
mm. anyway, right? I mean, there's no way that people wouldn't know that we were shooting that show. So I was like, how am I the one to out this when you have people like Jax Taylor and Kristen Doty a part of it? Are you you're telling me not a, neither of them have spilled the beans on this? Yeah. Jax was telling me us about it before he even started filming. He was like, Yeah, we're gonna start it. I was like, mm. Oh, all no, right. Alex, and I didn't think it. it was happening. I was like, I oh, really this didn't is either because so just sad. Jax was coming out. I was so like, sad. all right. Well, I think you even <laughs> sent me a note. You're like, hey, is this thing real? I was like, I need to know. <laughs> like, because like Jax, I don't care if he lives in his own world, but I'm no. concerned about what he tells Britney. Yeah. And so like if this is not real, I need to sit Britney down and be like, girl, we, we got to move on from the conversation. <laughs> so my ache, ache is uh, the Beverly Hills reunion at the end of this week because mm. I just want to be done with that. Okay. And then my relief, uh, and it pertains to the first episode of VPR, is that Tom finally came back from New Zealand. Alex, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. My loves, I love you all. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Remember, do not support... Do not support any places uh, that use animals for entertainment. No animals in captivity. Spay and neuter your pets. Adopt, don't shop. I love you and I'll catch you next week. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you next week.